exciting episode of the Maternity Show with me, Sona Dabo. And joining me on this episode is a valuable Gambian, a young lady, of course, by the name Sena Mubaraja. Sena is a registered nurse, a midwife, with over a decade of experience in the field of health. Sena currently works with the Non Communicable Disease Unit under the Directorate of um, Health Services in the Gambia. Of course, he had other um, international commitments, but for the purpose of this episode, why do we have Sainabo with us today? We are going to discuss with you viewers on a very important risk factor that affects pregnant women. And what is this? We are talking about tobacco. Of course, you will want to argue why are we talking about tobacco? Because most Gambians don't really smoke, especially women. But you will hear with me that during this discussion, we will get to understand why they are exposed to smoke and what category of smokers they would be. Senabu, thank you very much for joining me um, on this very important episode. You're welcome to the Maternity Show. Thank you very much, Sona. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Senabu. Um, so to set a base for our discussion, mm -hmm. let us quickly understand what tobacco is. What does tobacco really contain? Okay, so when we talk about tobacco, sauna, I think everybody's mind gets to cigarette. Yeah. When it comes to tobacco, we have a lot of tobacco and tobacco products, mm -hmm. ranging from cigarette itself, the famous shisha and yeah. the vapes. <laughs> it has, uh, we also have, uh, when you talk about tobacco, it's not only smoking. Mm -hmm. There are certain tobacco products that are smokeless. Mm -hmm. For example, the one that is used for snuffing, or the one is locked and so on. So we have different types of uh, tobacco products, the pipe, the cigars, the tabamunko that people use. So those are the type of uh, smoking. So when you look at tobacco itself, mm -hmm. so we're saying uh, why tobacco is harmful. We know when you look at non-communicable diseases, sauna, mm -hmm. it's in, on a rise in the Gambia. Sure. So before we used to say these are diseases of the affluent, but now you will bear witness with me that every household mm -hmm. you go to, if there is no person with hypertension or diabetes or the like, you know someone who has it or has those morbidities, amputation, stroke and the like. And when you look at tobacco, it's a risk factor for all of the non-communicable diseases. So uh, it becomes worrying. And as you said, people will be wondering why tobacco and maternity. But when you look at tobacco, it does not only stop with the active smoker. There is something that we call the secondhand smoking. So when it comes to the secondhand smoking, these are people that did not intend to smoke. For example, and you know, when it comes to public uh, smoking, there are laws and regulations being laid. But how many people follow it? In our homes, you feel, this is my home. Okay, I'm not smoking in a public place. This is my home. But we forgot that the home is also a public place. So what happens is, if a pregnant woman is in that mist uh, and you're smoking, when she inhales those things, because we're talking about a single puff of cigarette contains about 7,000 chemicals. Right. And out of those 7,000 chemicals, 70 are being shown to be carcinogens. That is, they might cause cancer. Yeah, so um, not to cut you short, mm -hmm. that will bring me down to asking what really tobacco contains mm -hmm. that is making it harmful mm -hmm. for consumption. So tobacco has, as I said, about 7,000 chemicals. And out of these 7,000 chemicals, you have a lot of toxins. You have carbon monoxide in it. You have butane in it. You understand? Mm -hmm. You see the tar that is in the roots is also in, 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 in tobacco. Yeah. So there are a lot of chemicals that are in tobacco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so I'm talking about the carcinogens that are in tobacco mm -hmm. and the fact that when smokers smoke, they are exposed to these carcinogens. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So where do we categorize our pregnant mm -hmm. women in this whole system now? So How it, do they become smokers? Okay, you know, uh, uh, although there's a less percentage, when we, in 2017, it is showing that 18% uh, of females smoke. So when you look at that smoking, when you're a female that you're smoking, research have shown that for you to conceive becomes hard. Yeah. And when you conceive, they are at a higher stage of uh, having kids with low bad weight mm -hmm. or uh, premature kids. And we know when a child is has a low bad weight or is born prematurely, mm -hmm. uh, he or she becomes, uh, uh, she, he or she is prone to a lot of diseases. Yeah. Research is showing for that person to live up to the five year birthday becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. So tobacco affects you even before you conceive. 
for uh, women uh, that are smoking or are secondhand smokers, conceiving becomes a problem. Because what happens is it affects the menstrual cycle. And we all know that if the menstrual cycle is affected, for one to conceive becomes a problem. So even if they conceive now, either they have low bad weight or when they're born, the child is born with a lot of abnormalities. So even if the, they give birth and the, the baby is still inhaling, uh, research has shown that it affects the lungs and the heart of the baby. Mm -hmm. So for the survival of the baby becomes compromised. It becomes compromised. Yes. So um, now that we realize that it does not necessarily mean that the woman will take a puff and smoke, mm -hmm. but she can still be exposed. I, can't I think answer. we still need to clarify how this woman is exposed to the smoke. Okay. Is so, it at home level? What happens? It's not only at the home level, at home, at public places and the like. Because at the home level, when you're sitting with someone that is smoking, there's a second hand smoke, and you inhale those things, still it's like you're having the same eminence as the person that is smoking uh, uh, at the garages and all of that. So one thing I, I would like to clarify is when it comes to shisha, mm -hmm. because when it comes to shisha, we have seen that a lot of the young populace yeah. are the ones indulging it, sure. including female. So most of the time, people will say, ah, but shisha is not tobacco because it has a nice scent. scent. Mm -hmm. It has a nice jar and the like. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, shisha is actually contains tobacco also. And what happens is if the woman is smoking shisha, it's just like you're smoking tobacco. Mm -hmm. Because research is showing that one hour session of shisha mm -hmm. is actually equivalent to 100 sticks of cigarettes. Wow. And 100 sticks of cigarettes, sona, is five packets of cigarettes. Because one packet of cigarette contains about 20 okay, sticks. <laughs> so you see, yeah. Thing. So we have been seeing a lot of females with uh, fertility issues. Mm -hmm. So you get to the hospital and you've been asked, do you smoke? Usually the answer is yeah. no. Yeah. But when you probe further to ask, do you smoke shisha? They say yes. Mm -hmm. So shisha is actually tobacco. That is why, because we all know that tobacco has a chemical called nicotine that is addictive. Mm -hmm. That is why people are hooked now to, to, to shisha because of the addictive component. Yeah. And it's a trend now. It's a trend, yeah. yeah. If you don't do it, then you don't belong. <laughs> yeah. like it's fashionable. Yeah. So also, um, we realize that most women, especially if you are a young married mm -hmm. couple, mm -hmm. you are quickly exposed to smoking. Mm -hmm. Young boys now in Gambia smoke a lot, not just mm -hmm. in Gambia, but outside as well. Mm -hmm. So if you are not sitting close to a man that is smoking, let's say you are trying to avoid him, mm -hmm. are you still exposed? Yes, because uh, apart from the second-hand smoking, we have something that is called a third-hand smoking. So what happens in the third hand smoking? Okay, you might have a husband or a brother that does not smoke in your presence, but goes to the toilet to smoke. So when he or she smokes at the toilet and you both use the toilet, when he uh, uh, leaves the toilet, the remnants of the smoke are left on surfaces and the like. And for, for example, if you have a husband, he smokes, the residuals of the smoke is left on the dermal, that is on the skin. You could still, uh, research is showing, you could still have harmful chemicals from those things that you might inhale and it might affect you. That's yeah. So, um, as we are talking about inhaling this thing and it is affecting you, mm -hmm. now what really happens to a pregnant woman if she inhales smoke? Okay, what, ha from tobacco? Yeah, what happens is it affects her unborn child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, you know uh, when a, uh, a child is in the mother's womb, he or she is totally dependent on the mother for food, for breathing, and the like. Mm -hmm. So if this baby is actually inhaling the smoke, what it affects is two vital organs. Mm -hmm. That is the lungs and the heart. So the child might be born with defects of the heart, mm -hmm. or when the child is born, the child has uh, respiratory issues that the child will need to be admitted. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, if you're lucky, the child will be born when the child is mature. But if you're unlucky and the child is born prematurely, mm -hmm. then the, the chances of that child survival become slow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in order to explore more, mm -hmm. because I think this part is really, really important. important for mm -hmm. women to understand mm -hmm. how um, tobacco can affect their life and mm -hmm. the lives of the baby. Mm -hmm. So we know that um, as a pregnant woman, especially during your first trimester, mm -hmm. shed bread becomes an issue for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So what, does, what happens if you are having a shed bread and you're still exposed to smoking as a woman? Yeah, then you, like, uh, you, you might have, you, you will be exposed to the smoke 
And as you said, when you already have short breath and there is smoke, it, it also reduces the oxygen yeah. you are taking in. And if the oxygen is not being taken in, it directly affects the fetus. So anything that happens to the mother directly affects the fetus. So it is very, very important. I feel so now when it comes to women, they should take up their health. Yeah. If you have someone that is smoking, like stay away from that person or tell your husband, you can smoke, but don't smoke here. Because it does not only affect you, it affects me and my unborn child. Yeah. Yeah, that is why now, if you look at the cigarette packets, we have not only stopped at health warnings, but we have even gone further to do graphics. Mm -hmm. If you look at the present cigarette uh, in the market, mm -hmm. it has a child, a new unit with uh, oxygen trunks. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we will come down to mm -hmm. that part where um, we will need to understand um, as a program officer, mm -hmm. what your office is doing in terms of um, tobacco control mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. So again, um, most children again uh, would come out with congenital issues. Mm -hmm. So what are some of these congenital issues that women need to be mindful of as mm -hmm. a result of um, tobacco consumption? Yeah, so research have shown that there is a high link between cleft palate and people who smoke or have been exposed to smoking. So when you, uh, I don't know, cleft palate is when a child is born and the lip is not uh, fully formed. Mm -hmm. Usually you see there is a, a, a space in the lip. So uh, usually that is one of the abnormalities that they might have. Mm -hmm. Or they might have, as I said, uh, the vital organs that it affects is the lung and the, and the heart. Mm -hmm. And you know with the heart there are a lot of abnormalities. There might be problems in the valve. Mm -hmm. There might be pores in the, uh, uh, like the, because... When uh, the baby is a fetus, mm -hmm. the circulation of the adult is different from that of the fetus. Yeah. The fetus has uh, a hole in the heart. So that is expected to close when the person is born. Mm -hmm. So if you're affected to smoke or it's uh, yeah, smoking, mm -hmm. that might not close. So that might be a problem. The child might have congenital issues. So um, that will directly lead us to you know, explore a little bit of... Um, let's say, the circulatory issues mm -hmm. that the baby would face. Mm -hmm. So um, if the baby is being born mm -hmm. and the baby is exposed to tobacco um, consumption, mm -hmm. let's just get a little bit of what happens to the circulatory system of this baby. So it depends if it is. It, it, it doesn't mean that every baby that is exposed to uh, smoking mm -hmm. gets the circulatory system compromised. Mm -hmm. But for some that will get their heart compromised, for example, if the... If the they have any congenital issues. There are a lot of congenital issues. Mm -hmm. There might be problem with the chambers of the heart, either the, the, the iota or something, mm -hmm. or uh, issues with the valves, you understand? So it depends on what exactly that person has. So mm -hmm. if that person has some congenital issues, you will see the baby uh, has to be on oxygen, or the baby is blue, that shows you that ox there, there is not enough oxygenation. Like the, the extremities, the yes, the extremities will be blue. That is why when a baby is born, you take the APGA score. Part of the APGA score is looking at the color of the baby because a newly born baby should be pink. Yeah. That means that there is enough oxygenation. Mm -hmm. But when you see that the, the extremities, that is the hands or the feet, is bluish, then you become concerned that oxygen is not enough for, enough the, baby. for the baby. Yes. Yeah. So um, that so probably we would look at the fact that maybe the mother is not showing any form of um, complications, mm -hmm. but this is directly affecting the, the baby. baby yeah. So now that we've explored a little bit of the circulatory system, does mm -hmm. this have any effect on the baby's respiratory system as well? Yeah, because I said uh, the two vital organs that it affects and, is lungs, yeah, and, the and the heart. Yeah. So with the heart, you'll see that the baby is having difficulty in breathing. Mm -hmm. There might be nose flaring, like uh, you see the nose going up and down, and there might be chest in drawing whereby you will physically see that the baby is using a lot of muscles to breathe. Yeah. Does this include asthma? Yes, they might develop asthma because for the first two years, usually, you know, they have bronchitis. Mm -hmm. So they might, you might hear the wheezing sound or all of that. So those kids will uh, not go home. And you know, it's every mother's wish that when she yeah. delivers, mm -hmm. she goes home with a baby. Mm -hmm. But you have to be admitted and treatment will be given duly. This is really um, serious and mm -hmm. it's touching. Mm -hmm. So what really bothers well, uh, me is that most women are not really exposed to mm -hmm. understanding what smoke does to them. Mm -hmm. So you go to most Gambian houses, you meet that women are comfortable sitting with their husbands and they're smoking. Yeah. So um, I, 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 um, 
having the urge to ask you a very important question. But before I do that, I think we would use this moment to go for a quick break and then we'll be back shortly. <laughs> And I guess on this episode is Senabo Balacha. Senabo, um, from that quick break, we will now want to explore um, other venues. Let's look at, because we know that tobacco is like a risk factor. Mm. Tobacco consumption is a risk factor for most MCDs. Mm. And coming from the MCD unit of mm. the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. um, let's look at what other um, MCDs tobacco cause for a pregnant woman. Okay, you know, hypertension becomes a problem. If the person is smoking, as we said in the beginning, mm -hmm. NCD is a risk factor to a lot of uh, non-communicable diseases, including uh, cardiovascular disorders. And when we talk about cardiovascular disorders, hypertension is not a, it's, it's, it's part of it. Mm -hmm. And when you look at hypertension now, we know it's on an increase, especially when it comes to pregnant women. Sure. Because when women are pregnant, they might have had pre-existing hypertension. There is someone who is pregnant, but it's not a pregnancy that brought in the hypertension. She already had hypertension. Mm -hmm. We had pe we have people that are PIH, pregnancy induced hypertension. Mm -hmm. And that can be due to a lot of factors. And tobacco can be a factor. Mm -hmm. And if that, pre if that hypertension is not managed, the person might lead to eclampsia. And we know eclampsia is a deadly maternal complication that uh, will uh, take a lot of lives or leave a lot of complications. Mm -hmm. For example, you might have complications with the renal. There are a lot of renal issues that are linked to uh, pre-eclampsia. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very important when you're pregnant. If you were a smoker, you see smoking. If you're not a smoker, you avoid second-hand or third-hand smoking. Mm -hmm. So on, yeah. So um, coming back to your office, mm -hmm. what has been done since the establishment to help um, reduce tobacco consumption in the Gambia, especially for maternal women? Yeah. So you know when it comes to uh, uh, tobacco and tobacco products, mm -hmm. the problem is it's a legal product. So that is why we always say it's legal but lethal. Yeah. So as a ministry, we cannot stop the importation of tobacco. So what we can do is to put in uh, measures to make sure that the demand and the, uh, the supply of tobacco is being controlled. Mm -hmm. That is why the uh, Tobacco Control Act 2016 was enacted. Okay. So with the Tobacco Control Act, it has laws and regulations mm -hmm. that would at least help people when it comes to tobacco. Because the first uh, article will talk about the smoke-free environment. Mm -hmm. It shows that uh, every person has a right to a smoke-free environment. Because we believe if there is a smoke-free environment, mm -hmm. then the woman will not be exposed to that uh, second-hand yeah. smoke. Yeah. So uh, those are some of the things that we do. Yeah. So where is the smoke-free zone? So when it comes to the Tobacco Control Act 2016, we don't have any smoke-free zone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is in the act. Yes. Yeah. So the act says uh, uh, the only place that a person can smoke is 100 meters from the next person, 100 meters from your right. 100 meters from your left, 100 meters in front of you, 100 meters at the back. And with our population and space, do yeah. we have that? <laughs> well, uh, we can just put in laws and people have to abide by those laws. We don't have smoking zones. Because when we have smoking zones, for example, if the studio was to be taken as a smoking zone, so on, you can smoke here and you leave. What about the old woman that will come and clean here? She did not decide to smoke, and we said it does not only stop at secondhand smoking, mm -hmm. but the remnants of the smoke will be in the room after a week or even a month. Sure. Yeah. And that, that makes it hard. To that have makes a it hard. Thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, what other things do you do you look at in the law apart from the smoke free? Yeah. So we have the smoke free environment. We also have comprehensive ban on tobacco advertisement and promotion. With that law, we're saying that uh, tobacco should not be something that is advertised. 
with that we have made a very good uh, leadway because when you look at uh, TVs and the media, whether it's print or electronic, mm -hmm. you hardly see people advertising together mm -hmm. or billboards that will show. So yeah. when it comes to the promotion, it means uh, we're saying when it comes to tobacco, there is no buy one, get one free. Yeah. We know there are a lot of communities that you go to the market and you'll be like, buy one, get one free, buy yeah. one, get a t-shirt, <laughs> buy one, get a bucket. No, but when it comes to tobacco, there is no buy one, get one free. Mm -hmm. So what happens is uh, uh, they will have other ways of promoting their item by bringing uh, umbrellas for the petty traders, mm -hmm. by bringing t-shirts, by bringing towels. So all of these things have been banned mm -hmm. and it has a greatly on a reduction. So when it comes to uh, uh, tobacco advertising promotion, when it comes to promotion and, and, and sponsorship too, mm -hmm. we're saying they have no right to sponsor anything. When it comes to the tobacco industry, they have no social responsibilities. Let them pay their tax. And, because the hand that feeds you, you can't actually control the hand yeah. that feeds you. <laughs> that yeah. makes it really difficult. Difficult, yeah. So they are not obliged to any social, they are not encouraged to go to any Nawetan and do a sponsorship or the like. So that is the comprehensive ban on tobacco advertisement and promotion. So we also have the law that looks at packaging and labeling mm -hmm. because it is very, very important, Sona. Before you go to shops, you see that they have a cupboard that is neatly packed with tobacco products and the like. But the law is saying that tobacco should not be on display. It should be at a place that the person has to ask, then you sell, whether it's under the counter or inside the box, wherever, but it should not be displayed mm -hmm. and that it should be clearly labeled. Yeah. And it is saying that the health warning and the graphic should take uh, nothing less than 75%. So in the Gamba, it takes up to about 81%. Yeah. So that's what with the packaging and that uh, cereal, the unit packet should not contain anything less than 20 sticks. Mm -hmm. We know we sh usually there was a time whereby a small packet of 10 were being yeah. sold, mm -hmm. but that is no more happening. So it's either 20 or more. So that is all geared to making them stop. Stop, oh, yeah. Because, yeah. Because it's sad that you even see fathers sending their kids to yeah. run by. So, so the law did not leave that too when it comes to minors. So the law prohibits that when it comes to minors. And when, we, uh, when we're talking about minors, we're talking about kids that are below 18 years. Mm -hmm. So the law says that uh, when it comes to minors, they should not be engaged in the buying and the selling of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. That means even if you're a shopkeeper, you have a shop, and you're living and your child is that that person who is less than 18 years doesn't have the right to sell cigarettes. He or she, you as the father to at home or the mother do not have the right to send your kid that is less than uh, 18 to the shop to buy cigarettes for you. Mm -hmm. And there is no sale of single cigarette sticks. You can only buy a packet. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully um, that should help, but I think we've realized issues of enforcement here mm -hmm. and there. And Today you go anywhere, you see people smoking and mm -hmm. that does not leave women out. Mm -hmm. So um, we would shift a bit from tobacco um, consumption, like with smoking. Mm -hmm. This is um, a part that is really so much interesting for me and emotional. Mm -hmm. Because today most women have shifted mm -hmm. to the use of this particular thing. We, they call it taba. Mm -hmm. So and then taba has become like a second husband to most women mm -hmm. in Gambia. Mm -hmm. I want us to discuss about Taba. Um, say no. Okay. What is Taba? How does this affect women? But before we go down to what mm -hmm. it does to women, mm -hmm. how do women use it? Okay, so uh, before we, in our communities, we hear Taba and we see old women or old men doing the Taba and snuffing it, putting it on under their tongue and the like. But now it has actually migrated to taba being a super citrus. Super citrus is something that is being inserted in the in the in the vagina. So the taba is still something that is still being researched on. Because we're still looking if it actually contains tobacco products. Mm -hmm. But the famous name is taba and we know it comes in a lot of code names yeah. like Simon Cola, Musuboro, Safal and the like. Yeah. And uh, the little uh, ga uh, evidence we have gathered shows that it, it differs from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Maybe the one that is being made in, in Bakau mm -hmm. is different from the one that is being made in Birkama mm -hmm. because some use the, uh, the back of a baobab tree, make sure that they, 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 they how is it called? 
uh, roasted, mm -hmm. then uh, pounded, and all, then put ingredients depending on whether it's shea butter, whether it's garlic, whether it's pasty or the like. Mm -hmm. And you go to another place where they will use uh, kube jar or leaves, they said. Mm -hmm. So we know some of these herbal things uh, can cause euphoria. So what happens in the female organ is that uh, it's a self-cleansing organ. Yeah. It cleans for itself. That is why a lot of people will advise you to avoid douching. That is excessive washing. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is there's a normal flora in the vagina mm -hmm. that helps to protect that vagina. So what happens is when you do a lot of excessive cleaning, excessive douching, and they're like, what happens is it clears off that normal flora. Mm -hmm. That means you have no more protection. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine taking these corrosive uh, uh, things and putting it inside your vagina. And mind you, the epithelial cells of the vagina is the same as that of the mouth. Mm -hmm. And we know that the mouth, how delicate uh, the, the, the external female genitalia is or and the internal frame. So you put it in. What happens is it, it erodes that place, like it leaves uh, scars and the like. So if you have uh, um, uh, lesions and the like, this might lead to cervical cancer. You might have three cancer lesions. Mm -hmm. So we're appealing to the public mm -hmm. because you don't even know what this contains. Exactly. You mm -hmm. insert it, and we have seen that when people insert it, a lot of people will complain of severe diarrhea. Others will complain of dizziness. Mm -hmm. Others will complain of euphoria. Like you don't even know where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's and it's becoming very addictive. Some will tell you that they cannot do without it. Mm -hmm. Some will tell you, and women use it sauna for different reasons. Some will tell you they're using it because of infections. Mm -hmm. Some will tell you uh, they're using it because uh, as a as a sex appetizer. Some of them will tell you they're using it for infertility. So it has different reasons they're using it. We're just uh, appealing that if you see any symptom, if you're a woman, you know all women have discharge, which is normal. Mm -hmm. But if you see the discharge is excessive or is offensive or the color has changed, please go to the nearest health facility. And treatment for most of these things are free and it's available. Mm -hmm. So it's better than uh, like you. But you know, as women, you even as educated as we might be, the moment we're chatting, you tell me, hey, there's this new product. If you do it, the moment you say it, I want to try it. Someone they else, motivated. they become motivated to. And the problem is you will hardly see this so-called tabab being sold openly. Yeah. So that is the thing. If it was small openly, like you go to a serene market and you see that it's in, you just confiscate it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you will see that women will be selling it in between or at their tools or at the naming ceremony. And the like. mm -hmm. But the message is clear. Uh, it's an unsafe product and it causes a lot of harm to the woman. Mm -hmm. So if you see any problem, please go to the NRS Health Facility. So as this causes, um, let's say, Cancer to you. Yeah. So if you are a pregnant woman, does this apply to you too? Because I think my pregnant woman, I mean, I believe pregnant women are using it. Yes, yeah, some pregnant women. So, so now what happens is when you are pregnant, uh, the cervix closes. Mm -hmm. So if you're using these corrosive things and it happens to open the cervix, what happens is you might lose the pregnancy. Because the moment the cervix is open, that means that the baby is ready to come. Yeah. So uh, this might uh, make you lose the pregnancy. What happens if the pregnancy is not even term? That means that you might lose the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. If the baby is term, it might uh, cause uh, excessive contractions. We know that yeah, you have to have contractions so that the baby can come. But if you have excessive contraction, mm -hmm. it can actually cause uh, postpartum hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is we know the placenta is being attached. Mm -hmm. So when you're in labor, the placenta detaches. Uh, slowly, but if you're using a corrosive thing that causes you to have very quick contraction, mm -hmm. it might detach the the the, uh, the placenta, and this might lead to hemorrhage. So probably women would understand what happens during this process, and that mm -hmm. is why in most cases mm -hmm. women will advise each other mm -hmm. to use this cover when they are due for time. Them. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we, we, we are, some people will say ah uh, like mat mm -hmm. You understand? And they'll be using all kinds of stuff. So we will tell them precipitate labor is not good. That means that a labor that is so quick, mm -hmm. there should be a system. You understand? Mm -hmm. 
Imagine if there are contractions. What happens in labor? There is contraction and relaxation. Mm -hmm. You know, when it contracts too, that unborn child is in compromise. That is why God does it that you have a time to rest, yeah. then it comes back, then you have a time to rest. Mm -hmm. But what, what happens is when it comes so fast, mm -hmm. that means everything is like drawing itself. The placenta is trying to detach abnormally. Mm -hmm. So for you to have hemorrhage becomes a problem. And so now when you look at maternal mortality, mm -hmm. it is showing that 60% of maternal mortality is due to hemorrhage. And this contributes to and this hemorrhage. contributes to hemorrhage. And what happens? And you know, we know a lot of women come to like pregnant. They, they come to labor anemic mm -hmm. because when you look at the hemo, uh, hemoglobin, a lot of women come to uh, uh, labor with low HP. Mm -hmm. And when you have low HP, that is even like it can lead to uh, uh, when you have a low HP, it can lead to hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. So if you have this precipitate labor, you have low HP, you have a lot of bleeding, you will need blood. And we know our oh, banks do BC, not BC, always, BC. yeah, the, our banks do not always have blood because people are not willing to, to donate. Mm -hmm. So now, yeah. now, if you don't have money, you just go to the bank and tell them, I want to withdraw. You cannot withdraw <laughs> something that you did not deposit. Really. So it's the same with blood. You cannot have blood, like the hospital tries all the time to make sure. But if people do not come and donate. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when you, what happens if you use these things, you have precipitate labor, the, uh, the placenta has already started detaging, mm -hmm. you deliver, then you have postpartum hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. Now they have to make sure that uh, to go and look for blood before that blood comes, it might lead to death. So I think it's it's really not worth it. It's not. Mm -hmm. And then the message to the woman before we leave that mm -hmm. would be what? Um, so so now the message is clear. Mm -hmm. When it comes to smoking, let's start from smoking. Shisha is tobacco. Mm -hmm. So please do not indulge in smoking shisha uh, because it causes a lot of fertility issues and it causes preterm labor, low bad weight of the baby and the like. Mm -hmm. And for the second hand smoking, it's your house. So set the ground rules. If your husband <laughs> is a smoker, if he wants to smoke, let him go out. So that is one. So when it comes to the tabai issues, we are saying this is unsafe. Yeah. So there is nothing that should get into the vagina. We are even saying soap should not even get there. Yeah. So how can something that you insert, and sometimes it, 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 it bonds. Yeah. If it bonds, that means there's a, because sauna, you be shocked that for some of the composition, some put soda. Wow. So what happens is even when you use soda to wash bowls or wash clothes, yeah. you could feel how your irritating fingers are it yeah, irritating. It becomes talkless of that delicate organ. Mm -hmm. So we are urging people, if you have see any signs of infections or you have low abdominal pain, increased discharge, offensive discharge, please go to the nearest health facility. We're not saying go to the nearest pharmacy. Go to the nearest health facility. You'll get someone to check you. You'll have laboratory investigation and the right medication will be administered to you. Yeah, so I would really love that we go to this and then say a lot of things about it because mm -hmm. it's really affecting a lot of women. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid this is all what time could permit us this cause on this um, episode. Mm -hmm. We will probably have you back to mm -hmm. this cause more on this. Okay. And there you have it, viewers. So you know what he's saying, tobacco is the only legal um, thing that could kill mm -hmm. almost half of its consumer. Yes, yeah. Therefore, we should desist. The only way we can do this is to come together and fight against it. Mm -hmm. She said we have our houses, we set the ground rules for all of it. Mm -hmm. And then that should include no smoking in my corner. Mm -hmm. And even if you're smoking, go from me for hours and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it becomes difficult for people to stop their husband from smoking. Like, yeah. The only way you can do that is to be a master in your own house. Mm -hmm. And viewers, that does it for this episode. We want to take your leave now. But before we do, we just want to remind you all that we had Sena Bubarachang with us, a registered nurse, and of course, a midwife. And she's also a communication um, specialist with uh, Prospect for Girls. So before we leave you, we would just want to allow you to understand that this show is open for partnership and sponsors are also invited. Until we come your way next time, do enjoy the rest of our program.